This is one of the best books ever. And I'm not even joking. When we talk about Frank Miller and we talk about Bill Sienkiewicz, this is in the conversation. Yes, Daredevil Born Again is great. Yes, Sin City, Dark Knight Returns. I get all that. Yes, New Mutants. I get all that. But this together, this team up, well, this was the team up. These guys did a book. Now this copy um, is long ass out of print. There's This has been redone a million times. What they need to do is make a big old honking hardcover of this because it is so good and Bill's work is so just brilliant. We're gonna dive in and talk about this because this is no joke. If you've not read Electra Assassin, then you don't know comics. That's the truth. That's the 411. Let's dive into Electra Assassin, one of my favorite books of all freaking time. That's not Hyperbole Biscuit. Okay, everybody, let's dive into the actual book of Electra Assassin. Um, it's a little glossy, and I apologize for that, but I'm going to do my best so I don't, like, ruin it here. Um, this is really is, honestly, kind of a masterpiece. Um, to me, it is honestly one of the best writer and artist team ups um, ever. Like no joke, this is one of the best things. I have this old version. I do need to get a bigger, like badder, awesomer version of this book and I'm gonna have to do that soon. Um, just going through it again just reminds me of how just amazing this book is. But yeah, I love this thing. Um, it is Electro Assassin, Frank Miller, Bill Sienkiewicz. I don't think Frank gave him like roughs. I think he just basically said, go to it. It, but I could be wrong. Frank could have given him thumbnails. I don't have the background on that. Put in the comments, let me know. If you know, did he give uh, Bill like thumbnail sketches? I would be really interested to see that because I'm I'd be surprised if he did, but you never know. Um, and it's really hard to tell actually. Some, there's some things that might have kind of a, um, Frank Miller kind of composition, but a lot of it feels so much like Sienkiewicz that I think he just did it himself. Um, such a great book. This is a, a, a iconic image. Let's just get in on this. You know, one of the things that stood out for me when I first got this book was the, just the different art styles that this book goes into. Uh, we're doing a lot of mixed media. We're doing everything from crayons to gouaches to you know, acrylics, paint, pen and ink. He's really going all over with color. Uh, again, this is some of his best stuff here. He's just very expressive. It's that illustration mixed with cartooning and just, uh, just brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, this is some of the best comics ever, dude. This was in 86, when was this? Hang on. I want to say this was 86. Let me see. Yeah, I was right. What do you know? 86. So, dude, the late 80s was, to me, the golden age of comics. Not just because of my age, but there's so many great, great comics that were done around this period. Um, you know, mid-80s, late 80s, you're talking Arkham Horror, or uh, Arkham Asylum, I mean. You know, The Watchmen. There's so much stuff going on here in an art way, too. This is real, you know... This is real like um, lace and stuff that he glued on here. You know, so when you look at stuff like uh, David Mack, it's coming from here, okay? David Mack, big influence. Look at this here. This is Bernie Fugues, okay? If you know Bernie Fugues, if you know that illustrator, if you know people like, um, um, ah, shit, um, it left me. I'll, I'll think of it. These are a lot of the great illustrators. This looks like Bittering Fuse or maybe like uh, Colby Whitmore. You know, some of those kind of illustrators. Um, that's what I That's what I would say. Um, you know, you could see stuff like John Muth in here. 
Uh, look at this, just great iconography. I mean, the story, of course, begins with Electra, her kind of uh, origin story. And look at the colors changes, just in different scenes. It's just completely different now. Abstract, these big blocky. And then it goes from this abstract, change scene into a whole new art, right? Whole new kind of art style. Now this is a very muted, fully painted, you know, uh, looks like um, acrylics or, or washes, you know, painting. And then it goes back to this. And so he's really using the different mediums for the different parts of the story, being very expressive, very, um, you know, abstract and the story's great. I mean, I gotta, this thing, I, I need to just read this like once a year. It's just so good. Um, he's also doing these, this great work here with the airbrush. You know, he's using a lot of like airbrush techniques and stuff like that, that really was kind of new to this time uh, in comic books. That is, you, again, you'd see a lot of these things in illustration, movie posters, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, just brilliant work. These hard outlines, strong, just solid red, you know. Um, a lot of David Mack in here. A lot of, a lot of those artists would look at this and just say, I mean, I'm working on my book now, Shangri-La State, and I'm thinking, dude, I need to do this. But honestly, it's just so daunting the the idea i just want to stick with black and white and screen tones and i mean if i were to just put color in it it just adds so many more complexities and questions and decisions and um you know it's brilliant stuff i love his panels compositions yeah i don't think miller gave gave him anything here i think this is all just him what a great image too he does these wonderful splash pages I mean, again, that really reminds me of Bernie Fuchs, big time. Um, great stuff, just some pencil drawing here. And then now he's using this uh, 12, 12 panel grid, no borders, just this white, you know, just to be different, just to kind of like change it up. In fact, does he even use black borders? I'm not even gonna do black borders. It's all just, uh, white which gives it kind of again I think a kind of a painter kind of feel man some of this stuff is really good a lot of white airbrush a lot of airbrush in here too I would love to see the original boards I saw some at comic-con every now and then you'll see a an original uh, page from this they're hard to find to see because you know they've been sold and and people want them and have them and keep them and they don't necessarily put them up for display necessarily that I know of. Um, this is such a good book, you guys. This is one of the best, like as far as just straight up pound for pound superhero stories, this is it. I mean, it is his, he's on his game. This is after, uh, this is after Wolverine, after uh, Daredevil, of course, after New Mutants with Bill did. I mean, this is like when they were like really Hitting it. Is this before or after Dark Knight Returns? Oh, I think it's after. I think this is after Dark Knight Returns. I'm not positive, but I'm almost I'm almost 100% on that one. Yeah. Let me put a little screen tone on that a little bit. Yeah, this is really great stuff. Um, I sure hope this turns out okay and doesn't kill you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a bigger version of this so I can just like now see now this reminds me a bit of Miller here. This just because of the Dark Knight stuff. And again, he might have given him... Okay, this is great. This is classic Sienkiewicz. Classic, over-the-top, big, you know, the big shoulders, the the very expression, a lot of expressionist kind of, like, feel to it. And um, you have to be good to pull it off, you know? You have to be good. It's not easy to do that and make it look look real and right. Um, I should say right, not necessarily real. But uh, yeah, I love these little mini pages. This is a good. Um, yeah, wonderful stuff.
Anyway, this is that book, man. You got to get this book. It is just out of control. And then he'll pop in. It's kind of like um, a black and white. And look, and now he's just pasting it in there. Just the colors. And we got to give it up to the lettering, too. This is not easy. They're using a lot of different things here. Different colors. Um, different kind of little little accent things to kind of let us know when they're thinking or talking, you know, kind of a word balloon deal. Uh, the lettering is really good. And he's incorporating a lot of his sound effects in the art. You can tell this is in the art. Um, and that is that is always fun. And I think it always brings it up to the next level. I didn't do that with Pariah. Uh, I'm hoping to do that more with the book I'm working on now because I think it's just something to just add so much more. Look at that panel. Isn't that great? Can you see that good? Yeah, that's a great panel. Yeah, this is um, some of, this is kind of their, again, I'm gonna just say it again, their, their best work. Um, it is kind of this love story. It is Electra doing her thing. This is um, great action, great story and definitely worth tracking down. It's not even about tracking down, you're gonna be able to find this book. It's it's not that hard, and there's probably like 50 versions of it uh, out there. So get it, it's worth every cent. In fact, I wanna reread this again because it's so freaking good. Um, Electro Assassin, that's my recommendation. That's my kind of quick little review. Uh, let me know what you guys think of, of this book. What are some of your favorite Miller books, your favorites in Kevich? Uh, check out the Patreon, of course. Uh, let me know what you think of the kind of the cartooning and the, the comics I'm working on right now. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great one. Bye.